Hello, Archons. It's Probnar89 with another groundbreaking discovery here on Call of the Week. Cracking into a brand new display today. Let's go ahead and see what we've got inside. Well, I'm guessing that there's going to be 12 decks inside, but what's what kind of decks? What will they be? Let's. Oh. Oh. Upside down. And backwards, what's going on, display? Whoa, they're just put in all kinds of ways here. Maybe that will improve the quality of the decks. Maybe the backwards ones are evil twins. This is, <laughs> I, I don't know. Some of the some of the packaging uh, that I've seen out of Dark Tidings so far seems like it's been a little bit uh, rushed. We'll put to put it generously. <laughs> Very interesting. All right. Well, we'll we'll turn this guy up uh, right side up, and we'll go ahead and see what is inside here. I have had some comments about the size, relative size of my hands to the cards. I would like to point out there is some you know perspective going on, but also my hands are kind of big. So just just throwing that out there. Uh, all right, looks like this is the Archon card side, so we'll flip. Here's the name, sticking up. Uh, Countess Ghost Tense, the Aimless Warrior. Okay, the Aimless Warrior. Countess Ghost Tense, the Aimless Warrior is a Saurian Fish Shadows deck. All right. The dinos and the fish allying with the thieves. Ooh, can't even get my tool in. Oops, don't show that. I uh, can't even get my tool in the top of this one. Going, going for the bottom on, on this guy here. Countess Ghost Tents, the aimless warrior. All right. Let's see what is inside. Yeah, we'll leave those there. Alrighty, starting off with Swallow Hole. Now I'm gonna go ahead and change the way that I'm doing this. Uh, commons, I'm not going to read it anymore. This is a rare, so I'll go ahead and read it. Uh, just because I think the set has settled in and I'd like to do a little bit more analysis of the decks and a little bit less uh, reading of the cards. So this is an action, play only if the tide is high. Uh, it reads, play, choose two creatures, purge the chosen creature with the lowest power and give plus one counter power counters equal to the power to the other chosen creature. So it's a nice way to remove a little threat on your opponent's side and boost up the power on one of your own creatures. Uh, yeah, interesting. Gladiodontus is a returning card, so I'm not going to read it, but uh, it's one of these big creature dino creatures that enters play stunned, and you can use it a couple times in a turn. It's good for fighting, for sure. Serarium, very nice. This is a rare... Um, sorry, not a rare, an uncommon artifact. It's got an amber pip. It's a location. Each creature with the lowest power cannot reap. So we're hoping to see more big power creatures in this deck. A little bit worrying with shadows and unfathomable that tend to have a lot of low power creatures. Uh, Cortison Octavia, we know that one. Crushing Charge. This is a common. It's a board wipe. A second crushing charge. Okay, so uh, lots of low power creature hate in this deck so far. Again, I'm a little bit worried with our shadows and unfathomable. Decadence, um, uh, also a common, so you can use it to either uh, basically like a golden spiral, exalt ready and use, or move one amber from a cre creature to another creature. Uh, Vita is another common. Uh, exalt a friendly non sarian creature, and then you can reap with it. Second Vita. Uh, ostracize. Lose an amber, and if you do, you get to purge a creature. That's a strong card. Getting rid of some of your opponent's uh, creatures there. Reach advantage. This is going to capture three if the tide is high or you raise the tide. Spoils of battle. All right, a classic returning card. Very strong amber control here. Um, we do have the two Vitas that will... You know, put amber on creatures. Decadence puts ambers on amber on your own creatures. Reach advantage, uh, and to Octavia too. But <laughs> not a lot of dino creatures. You, you know, you want with this um, 
Serarium, you want a lot of big creatures here. And so far, we've only seen four creatures total in the house. And <laughs> that's it. That's the whole house. So, um, a little bit, little bit concerned. I mean, two crushing charges is good to just clear out any annoyances on your opponent's side. But, and Swallow Hole will make your stuff even bigger and harder to get rid of. But, yeah, just... A lot of actions and not a lot of pips and not a lot of creatures. So Amber Gen looks like it's low. Mole is a fun card. We know Mole from previous sets. It's a rare. It's an artifact. You, you, it allows the opponent to spend Amber on that creature. Very neat. Uh, hand Cannon um, is an upgrade. This creature gains Skirmish and Fight. Move one Amber from this creature to... from. The creature this creature fights to your pool. So two ways to get the amber on your opponent's creatures here. Interesting. Lil Niff. Uh, we know Lil Niff from before. So hmm, that goes well with the Gladiodontus. Because he likes to fight. Um, but not a lot else so far. I mean, it goes well with the uh, hand cannon as well. Because it makes things into skirmishers. So that's good. Monty Bank, one power creature. Uh, play, you may exalt Monty Bank up to two times. Action, steal one for each Amber on Monty Bank. So this goes really well with all the capturing we see in Sarian because you don't really want to exalt it unless you can keep it super, super safe. Uh, you don't want to put Amber out there to steal from your opponent. It's kind of a, a silly to maybe steal later, right, from your opponents. It's kind of a silly uh, thing to do to exalt it twice and then... Uh, it's got one power, and it's like just going to be dead. It's not even elusive or anything. So um, if you can capture onto it instead and then go back into Shadows and, and use it, you're in a much better spot. Uh, Hard Simpson is, of course, the creature that uh, when it gets damaged, it steals. If, depending on the tide, it steals for you or steals for your opponent. Second Hard Simpson, so we're going to need to see some pinging damage for this to be viable here. Hobnobber. Uh, of course, the creature that has an action steal two if your opponent has six. Uh, Jackie Tar, it does some does some damaging to your opponent. Uh, Mug, now that'll work with Hard Simpson. It's got an Amber Pip, and you know you uh, you move Amber from that creature to your pool and deal two damage, so that you can hit your own Hard Simpson there and do some damage to it and make a steal, but. We're going to need to see some more uh, some more pinging damage to make this viable. One-Eyed Willa is a two-power creature. It's got fight and steal and it gains skirmish and elusive when the tide is high. Walk the plank, uh, either stealing or damaging if your opponent doesn't have any amber. A second walk the plank, so some more stealing potential here. Uh, yikes, this Shadow's House um, really lacks the support for the two hard Simpsons here. Um... Yeah, like I said, the the Lil Niff has some potential. Monty Bank has some potential. I guess One Eyed Willow with Lil Niff is pretty good uh, if you can keep them both around for a turn to to go back into shadows. At least a turn to go back into shadows. Um, walk the plank, stealing out of hand is great, but mm, I'm I am. Uh, yeah, I, I'm a little concerned about this deck here. All right, let's see what the fish have to offer. This is a really fun card. Um, it's a rare artifact. Got an amber pip. Saw a sabog's thingamabob. I think this is the first one of these I've opened. Um, after your opponent forges a key, exhaust each creature they control. Really cool. You know, it's only going to fire two times maximum in a game. But... Uh, it's just a strong effect, a strong pace effect, really slows your opponent down after they forge that key. And then if you have any exhaustion hate in your deck, oh no, wait, that doesn't actually matter because they'll still have a chance to ready. I was going to say, if you have exhaustion hate, you can exploit it during your turn, but uh, they'll forge the key during their turn and then, um, and then they'll be able to ready during their ready card step. I guess if you like hit their key frog or something and they exhaust, uh, they forge the key and exhaust, and then you can hit everything with your exhaustion hate, but 
That seems very situational. Here's a great card. Chosen one. It is a rare nine power. Instead of readying creatures they control during their ready card step, your opponent deals one damage to the chosen one for each exhausted creature they control. Amazing card. Really slows down your opponent. Very hard to deal with. Uh, you have to have removal out of hand, basically, uh, or some sort of like readying or something. And it's a lot of power. And if you can play it on the first turn, uh, your opponent is just going to be punished. Sleep with the fishes. There's that exhaustion hate. So that goes really good with chosen one, right? They can't ready anything. And then you blow it all up on your next turn uh, by destroying each exhausted creature. Valokanth also goes well with Sleep of the Fishies. Six power. While the tide is low, Valokanth cannot be used. Fight, reap, exhaust an enemy creature and each of its neighbors. Really nice. Brain Drain. Okay, so this is, uh, you know, the pace card. It's going to be able to control your opponent's next turn and always have that information. Seeing what's in your opponent's hand is really good. Guilt Spine Netcaster. This one with a capture pip on it. Uh that reap exhausted creature effect again goes so well with sleep with the fishies. Lots of potential for sleep with the fishies here. Photic Raider, a uh, little bit of pace, a little bit of slowing your opponent down. That amber control. Whoops, got two cards there. Second Photic Raider, okay, and Portal uh, is the uh, the action that lets you raise the tide, and then you archive Portal if the tide is already high. Really strong cycling, get that pip again and again. Now, if this had one of the enhancements on it, that would be so good. Second portal, that's really, really great. If you have three of these, um, you're really happy because then you basically just take the chains and get guaranteed three pips every time you go unfathomable. But not here. Uh, Recusal's Chant, uh, again, goes really well with Sleep of the Fishies because if you can exhaust, if the tide is high, you exhaust everything. And then you sleep with the fishies and just blow up the board. It's a free board wipe, no chains. Beautiful. Wicolia uh, got a capture pip on this one and do that key cost control there. Um, hmm. Yeah, this deck is a bit. Uh, I'm a bit worried about this deck. Um, the Serarium. And let's just take a look at the, like, like I said, we have four larger creatures in, in dinos. We have a couple of five powers and a 15. And then in shadows, look at that. This is our shadows lineup. Look at all those twos and threes and you know, four is okay, but three twos and a one, yikes. And unfathomable, yeah, again, two Photic Raiders. Now, if the tide is high, it'll be a six, right? But still, Guilt Spine can't use that Reap effect. And Wakolia. Um, so... That's very concerning. I feel like you could not play uh, the Serarium in this deck, which is unfortunate. Anytime you have a, a card that's just dead in the deck, that's an uh, opportunity cost right there. Just a card you have to chain yourself with until you can discard it. Uh, two Crushing Charges, also really not ideal with the other um, cards we have in this deck and are basically going to be dead cards in here. Um there's some decent amber control, a uh, good amount of stealing in shadows and uh, capturing in dinos, but I just don't think it's enough to make up for, um, it, it's going to be slow. It's going to be really tough, like so few creatures in dinos. Let's do a couple of counts uh, so I have some better idea of what's going on here. One, two, three amber pips. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Mm, not great, not great. Uh, kind of standard for dark tidings. Um, there is some stuff that does stealing out of hand. So if we count these two, that gets us to fourteen. Uh, the two walk the planks gets us to fourteen. 
Uh, yeah, that's that's rough though. That's really that's really rough, especially with the Serarium. Is like, uh, if you do play it, then you're not going to be reaping with some of your creatures. Let's count creatures: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17 creatures. Pretty decent creature count. But two hard Simpsons, you're not always going to be able to play. You're not always going to be able to play hard Simpson because if you if your opponent's playing Dark Tidings and they have more tide control than you, uh, it's going to be pretty easy for them to exploit hard Simpson um, better than you because... We just don't have very many things that can do it. Mug is the only thing that can do it out of hand uh, on the same turn. I don't think there's any other ways to ping Hard Simpson. So, yeah. This this deck is really worrisome to me. Uh, I don't see how it could function super well. So, little bit of a disappointing deck here. Um but you know that's that's the luck of the draw that's how it goes sometimes countess ghost tents the aimless warrior very aimless indeed not sure how much of a warrior it's going to be this has been another edition of groundbreaking discovery here on call of the week i'll catch you next time <laughs>